most of you, like myself, who used to live in the world, used to jam to Mary J. Blige. Let's just keep it real today. But I want you to just listen to the words of this song. And then I will give you a message that's going to reflect from what she's saying. So just listen, I want you to just hear the words. Now, as we just heard, Mary J. Blige, real love, searching for a real love. A couple of weeks ago, I was traveling from Tennessee from dropping my son off from spring break. As I was heading down the mountain, listening to the radio, I heard an old school song that I used to listen to all the time when I was in the world. How many remember Real Love by Mary J. Blige? Amen. As I listened to the words, the lyrics drew my attention. She said, real love. I'm searching for a real love. Someone to set my heart free. Real love. I'm searching for a real love. All right, come on. <laughs> Those words start to resonate in my spirit. At the moment, I told my daughter to start writing. I was listening, but having her write down whatever God was putting in my spirit. When I finally made it home, I tried to forget about everything that happened. I, but the Lord would not let me rest until I stopped being disobedient and started being obedient to what? he wanted me to do with what he had given me. So I started putting what God gave me on paper, hoping that someone will be blessed, delivered, and set free from this message. So I looked up the world's definition in the Webster Dictionary of the words real and love. And what I came across was the word real means actually existing as a thing or occurring in fact, not imagined or supposed, of a substance or thing, not imitation or artificial, but genuine. The word love means an intense feeling of deep affection, a person or thing that one loves. But my NIV Life Application Study Bible defines the word love as a strong affection, desire, or devotion. Mm -hmm. We find that most people today are searching for real love. Mm -hmm. Some try to find real love in money, mm -hmm. alcohol, drugs, sex, and even ungodly relationships. At a very young age, I was sexually molested. I've been gang raped, and I've been promiscuous through my child, teen, and young adult life. I've lived a sin for life, something I am not proud of. I found myself searching for real love in ungodly relationships. Even in my adult life, I was still searching for real love. I had the love of my wonderful husband, children, and family. But no real love could I find. Not until 2007 when my family and I relocated to North Carolina. I then rededicated my life to the Lord to change my life, to take away the hurt and the pain, the guilt, and the shame. I was now in a godly relationship with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I finally found real love. But actually, 
real love found me. Yes. Yes. As it is written in Ephesians 1, chapter 1, verse 4 through 8, it says, and I made these verses personal. Even before he made the world, God loved me and chose me in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt me to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do. And it gave him great pleasure. So I praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on me who belong to his dear son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased my freedom, Amen. your freedom, Amen. with the blood of his son and forgave my sins and your sins. He has showered his kindness on me along with all wisdom and understanding. Brothers and sisters, today I come to tell you that Jesus demonstrated real love when he died on the cross at Calvary. You can read about it in John chapter 19, verses 17 through 42, and chapter 20, verse 1 through 9. And the NIV application study Bible commentary says, Jesus' resurrection is the key to the Christian faith. When I think about the key, I think about a key that unlocks something. That key unlocks our faith in Jesus Christ. Why? One, Jesus, as he's, just as he said, Jesus rose from the dead. We can be confident, therefore, that he will accomplish all he has promised. Friday night, as I attended a service at Holly Springs United Church of Christ on the seven last sayings of Jesus, I thought about what Jesus was doing when he spoke his last seven sayings, which were, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he gave up the ghost. Woman, behold your son, behold your mother. I thirst. It is finished. Jesus knew his assignment was coming to an end. He was accomplishing all that he had promised for you and for me. Two, Jesus' bodily resurrection shows us that the living Christ, not a false prophet or imposter, is ruler of God's eternal kingdom. Three, we can be certain of our own resurrection because Jesus was resurrected. The divine power that brought Jesus back to life is now available to us to bring our spiritual dead selves back to life. In Romans 12, 2, it says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you a new person by changing the way you think then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Five, the resurrection is the basis for church witness to the world. Brothers and sisters, we have a great commission. And it's in Matthews 28, 19, and 20. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commandments I have given you, and be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And in Acts twenty-two fifteen, for you are to be witnesses, telling everyone what you have seen, and heard. 
In conclusion, for it is written in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only, one and only Son, that whoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Real love. Amen. Amen.